Good evening. Restructuring of Canadian mayors and municipalities under the auspices of the United Nations began in 1992. PM Mulroney signed Canada onto UN Agenda 21. Canada thus became a UN member nation state. 178 countries signed on, lured by the promise of big money to go green. By 2000, countries, including Canada, were being governed by directions of the UN, G7, G20, World Economic Forum, and World Health Organization, to name some. Every organization named is a foreign-based NGO, non-governmental organization, and every member of all these organizations is unelected. Parliamentary procedures for law changes weren't followed. In 1994, a municipal primer was issued to all local towns outlining how they were to restructure their governments. Though the municipal primer was a non-binding agreement, all towns adopted it. Our public officials, the mayor and councillors of that day, were partnered with a private corporation, the Corporation of the Town of Aurora, who appointed a chief administrative officer who helped implement the global agenda instead of a local one. The International Council on Local and Environmental Issues, ICLE, became the main source of consultation to push and fund the global agenda. We remind you that the World Economic Forum and the United Nations signed a strategic partnership framework in 2019 to jointly accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This is the same World Economic Forum whose chairman Klaus Schwab famously declared, you will own nothing and be happy. This is the same Klaus Schwab who, referring to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, boasted, we have penetrated more than half of his cabinet. We would ask Mayor Maracas and the councillors, why should the citizens of Aurora bow down to the intrusive dictates of an unelected foreign entity? The fact is we should not, and we will not. What, you ask, does any of this have to do with 15-minute smart cities? Absolutely everything. Smart, S for surveillance, M for monitoring, A for analysis, R for reporting, and T for technolo technology. Technology news editor Patrick Wood, 50 years of experience and expertise on technocracy, wrote, the 15-minute city is a cover for data collection bonanza for technocrats who design and operate them. Cities designed for maximum efficiency always reveal technocrat thinking that efficiency itself is the goal. Maximum surveillance allows for maximum control to achieve even more efficiency. At its very root, this mechanistic thinking is anti-human. The 15-minute city narrative seeks to fool you in the guise of saving the planet, keeping you safe, and delivering convenience. It's actually the gateway to digital IDs and CBDC, central bank digital currencies. CBDCs allow bankers and or governments to freeze your bank account because you happen to peacefully and lawfully protest and express your disagreement with government policy. Anyone remember the truckers' convoy in Ottawa, February 22, when the government of Canada invoked the Emergencies Act and froze the private bank accounts of law-abiding citizens? 15-minute cities are wolves in sheep's clothing. Don't believe the countless stories spewing forth from the 24-7 basis from the elitist captured mainstream media, all claiming to have your best interests at heart. We have been burned too many times. In reality, 24-7 surveillance through the Internet of Things inside your home, 5G and LED street lights outside, monitoring and tracking and recording everything. Implementation of exclusion zones and geofencing to restrict movement and travel. Ability to control behaviors through military-directed energy technologies property and car ownership to be outlawed, evictions from farms and rural areas to go to gather people into cities, digital passports being promulgated by the UN, World Economic Forum, and the World Health Organization are in the final stages of planning and implementation. They are tied to social credit score, which is determined by compliance to government directives. These passports control all access and all aspects of life. Digital currency is being implemented to end cash and monitor all your spending. Your digital currency will be turned off or on depending on your compliance score. UBI Universal Basic Income is a state-controlled allowance forcing compliance by restricting access to food, money, services, and education. All of the above will enable climate lockdowns to be implemented easily, arbitrarily, and indefinitely. The real agenda of 15-minute smart cities is to monitor and control everyone and everything. In summary, in the coming days, Council will receive an electronic info packet which will contain the text of this delegation and other items. We, the citizens of Aurora, wish to enter into a meaningful, respectful dialogue with our elected members of Council on this complex, important issue. A key framework of that dialogue is a list of questions posed to Council. Can Council explicitly guarantee that citizens will be remain free to travel as is their right under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms? Can Council guarantee not to restrict access to essential services, medical care, bank accounts, government pensions, utilities? Most importantly, we, the citizens of Aurora, need to have the conversation with Council about exiting their non-binding agreement 
with the private, for-profit entity known as the Corporation of the Town of Aurora. We need to turn back the page to a simpler time when open, transparent municipal government serving its citizens and working in their best interests ruled the day. We are your equal partners on this journey. Thank you. Thank you.